I'm Andrew Phillips and welcome to my channel. I am here in Washington, D.C. You can see behind me is the Museum of the Bible. I'm going to be doing a full overview of that in this video. Uh, if you want to see any of the other overviews I've done of other places, including the Biblical Tabernacle, I'll have this down in the description. But let's head in and check this place out. This awesome museum was founded by Hobby Lobby owner Steve Green and opened up in November of 2017. And you can see they put a lot of awesome effort into this thing. You have this gift shop that we just saw here on the right. And across the ceiling here, they have these LED displays, which uh, displays different messages and images. Very well done here in the lobby as you walk into this museum. As you work your way down through the lobby, they have the Stations of the Cross, each one representing a different moment in Jesus' passion and death. You can see the beautiful sculptures that they have here. And as you work your way down, each one of them is numbered in order, and it also gives you a description of what the sculpture represents. This museum has a total of eight levels and 430,000 square feet of different displays and attractions that you can enjoy, including these awesome digital displays that are interactive. On the main level is this children's experience, which is pretty much set up for more of the younger kids to have fun with different games and attractions, but also some fun stuff for the adults as well. They have these cool activities here, here, here in this children's area. You can see all these different things that you can do. They have the different games. They have the kind of the little playground that you can climb up into. They have a Noah's Ark. But uh, take a look here behind me. It's pretty cool because they have these similar games to what you'd have at like Chuck E. Cheese and things like that, but Bible themed, which is very cool.
The theater doors will open in just a few moments. You can see behind me there that Old Testament Hebrew room. Uh, we just came out of there. It's a very cool interactive um, exhibit. I, I guess if you want to call it that, they have like animation and just smoke and different things. Very cool kind of walk through the history of the Bible. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to film that because um, you're not allowed to. So that will not be on this video. But if you come here, definitely check it out. But let's continue our tour. Located on the third floor is this world of Jesus of Nazareth, where you can go in and experience kind of what it was like in the life and times of Jesus. They have these different artifacts here on display that you can check out. They also have a, a cool recreation of Nazareth from, his, from Jesus' times, the biblical times that we're going to check out in a minute. But uh, you can see some of these artifacts here, very cool stuff. And then they also have this this big cinema playing The Chosen on there, and it's free for anyone to go in there and watch. Awesome stuff. And then here as we enter into the world itself, we can walk through and look at first century homes, and mikvah, synagogues, and just really see what it was like to kind of walk the streets during the times of Jesus. This is very cool, kind of walking the streets of Nazareth during like the times of Jesus would have been like, actually in here now, I'm coming inside of the synagogue. I'm gonna get some shots of it, but we're standing inside the synagogue right now. Very cool the way that they have it set up. Um, feels like you're like on a movie set or actually going back in time. As we saw a few minutes ago, they have a huge movie theater room where they're showing The Chosen, which is very cool. If you haven't seen that, uh, that series, definitely check it out. Very good series there on the life of Christ. But um, very well done, um, very well done all that they put into this museum.
you are 30 years into the first century, which means that Jesus is alive and is going to be teaching in and around Capernaum. And this is the synagogue. The main purpose of the synagogue is for the reading, the teaching, the study, and the learning of the Torah, the five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. That is its main purpose. We use this building for our Sabbath, which will begin today at sundown, or end Saturday at sundown. We also use it for what we call shul, we call it school. And we also use it as a courtroom. Now the difference between the synagogue and the temple is we go to the temple for what we call true worship. We go there for the festivals, we go there for the sacrifices, and we go there to remember our, our people when they wandered the desert for 40 years. Those are the main differences between the synagogue and the temple. You can see back here behind me. They have the trees and stuff. We just had that fun time there in the synagogue with the the reenactor of, of the uh, the rabbi, the teacher in there. That was very cool. Um, but just walking through here it feels like you're just you're walking through the streets. So. Definitely check this out if you can get over here to D.C. Um, we're fortunate because we live not too far from it, but uh, even if so, it's worth it. Even the elevator, as you can see here, is set up with some awesome digital displays on the walls that change out the images, as you can see there, very cool stuff. On the sixth floor, which is actually the eighth level, is where you have your eateries and restaurants, like the Mana restaurant here, offers uh, different foods ranging from pizzas and burgers, different things like that. Prices are a little bit pricey because you are in D.C. and it is a museum, but definitely very cool. And then if you go outside here, you have what's known as the Biblical Gardens. If you want to sit outside and eat, they have this beautiful glass waterfall coming down, adding to the, the scenery outside. Located on the fifth floor is the World Stage Theater. When we were there, they were showing the Chronicles of Narnia's Prince Caspian. But this theater can hold up to 472 people, and they use it for hosting concerts, theatrical performances, film screenings, and more. On the fourth floor is a room, as you can see here, called Illuminations. And this is an organization that brings together some of the world's largest Bible translation organizations. Their goal is to coordinate their work together and have the Bible accessible to all people by the year 2033. And as you can see, some of these, it says in progress or unreached. These are all different languages and different cultures, and they'll have kind of like these, these plastic Bibles. Uh, some spaces are empty, some of them are filled. But what you can do is you can go through and you can see the progress that's being made and how much more there is to do through the displays of the current ongoing Bible translations. Very, very cool interactive room. You can see the size of it here, all the different people groups and languages. You have this kiosk where you can then look up different 
languages, people groups, and you can click and get a status update on how the Bible translations are going and if they've been reached or not. Also on the fourth floor is this room titled Theater. And if you enter it, this is all centered around the show Drive Through History of the Bible, hosted by Dave Stotts. They have a replica there of the Jeep that he uses in the show. And then uh, as you go through, you have different historical things that you can check out. And there's also many theaters that feature Dave that you can check out as you're going through this part of the museum. This museum has a total of 1,150 items in its permanent artifact collection, as well as approximately 2,000 items that are on loan from other institutions and collections that you can check out. Also located here on the fourth floor is the History of the Bible Artifacts Room. This awesome room, as you can see, it's laid out very nice. Everything is displayed nice and clear for you to really take your time and enjoy, but it has over 600 artifacts, including early New Testament manuscripts and ancient coins, Torah scrolls, illuminated manuscripts, and rare printed Bibles. You can see the different displays here.
and recognize that we are speaking German to them. In this room, as well as in many other parts of this museum, you have these awesome interactive touch screens where you can take your time and do research and learn more about the Bible. Here on the second floor, you have the impact of the Bible in America, and we're going to check that out. This part of the museum allows you to trace the history of the Bible in America from the first settlers to the 21st century, exploring the profound and sometimes complicated impact of this book on American culture. They have this interactive kiosk, just like we've already seen many others, where you can dive into it. Awesome artwork on the wall, depicting the early settlers and how the Bible played an important role. A lot of cool digital screens. Awesome paintings on the wall, documenting some of the history as well as different books and things on display. And then as we move here, we can see the impact of the Bible in the world. And you can discover its global influence in areas like in films, music, literature, fashion, government, things like that. They also have this full-size Gutenberg press so you can see how it worked.
inside this display, which looks like a prison cell, you can see the impact of the Bible on prison ministries and how it's been used to transform the lives of a lot of criminals into born-again Christians and read their testimonies. Also on the second floor is this awesome 4D multi-sensory tour called the Washington Revelations, where you do a fly through the city. So we just finished in here doing a um, kind of like a 4D ride, flying over Washington, seeing all of the landmarks and inspiration from the Bible. Unfortunately, I couldn't film that either, but uh, that was in there. Very, very cool. This museum has got a lot of stuff in my opinion, that sets it apart from your typical museum. A lot of interactive stuff, fun stuff for the whole, the whole family. Um, good restaurants and just a lot of awesome displays and, uh, and like archaeological things. Very, very, very uh, impressed I am with this thing. This next display here focuses on all of the Old Testament prophets. It's pretty cool. You walk around the room and they have their name and a little bit of what their ministry was as a prophet and they have some like the paintings there of them and you can just kind of take your time go through and read up on all of them This next room had um, an interactive touchscreen where you would pretty much write a word on how the Bible makes you feel and it would display it on the screen there at the top. There was also this little recording studio called the Joshua Machine where you could go in there and do a private message with the door closed on just kind of a testimony on what you got out of the museum. Welcome to the Joshua Machine presented by I Am Second. And the last display in this room, you would write your favorite Bible verse and pick a background. It was all interactive touchscreen, and then it would display it on the big screen, and you could see the verse that you pick in your background floating around for everyone else to read. Okay, well that wraps up this overview here at the Bible Museum here in Washington, D.C. I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely check it out, especially if you are a Christian, you will appreciate it. Even if not, uh, it's a very cool place to come to. Very well done. They put a lot of money and effort into this place with 40 experiences, historical artifacts, awesome things to do here. Please send me any questions and comments. I would love to hear from you. I hope you enjoyed this. And as mentioned already, check out some of my um, overviews that I've done that I have down in the description. Um, I have a lot of them, including the the Biblical Tabernacle that I did in um, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. But uh, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.